Hello and welcome back to Sprues and Brews. Hello. So we have got a brand new army out this week for Age of Sigmar. And what an army it is. They, they do look incredible. Uh, the one of the well, there's only been a few brand new races to the game. So we have the Stormcast. Yep, we've had the Caradron Overlords, and now we've got the Ideneth Deepkin, who are uh, essentially elves that live underwater with magical sea life. Yeah. What, what more do you need in your game? You can't get much more fantasy in out there than than that, really, can you? It's pretty awesome. So it's gonna, I think it's going to be a big release, uh, probably a couple of weeks worth of releases. Mm -hmm. With this video, we're going to split into two. We're going to have one for the kind of the rule book and data cards and dice, which is this one that you're watching, and then a separate video that I'll link below uh, where we'll detail the kits that have come out in the first wave. Yep. And then we're also going to do a separate podcast on our um, on our podcast where we'll cover just the book and go more depth into like the the tactics and the list building and all that side. And again, we'll pop a link down so you guys can find it. Yes, we shall. But shall we? Um, yeah, let's let's have a look at what. So yeah, I mean. So yeah, Ideneth Deepkin. It's an order battle tome, but um, as we've seen with you know the last couple of books. Just because somebody's order doesn't mean they're necessarily the good guys. No, I think out of all of the the different sort of allegiances, order's probably one of the most disorganised. Literally just picked up the book today, um, when it's come out, so we haven't had a chance to read all the fluff properly yet, just a quick mm -hmm. flick through and look at the profiles. Um, I mean, again, it's a really, really nice book. We're going to go more into the kind of fluff and um, tactics side on the podcast once we've had time to digest it. Resident elf expert Jay is going to do some spotting up and uh, see what we can do, but it is a pretty, pretty book. Lots of images of some of the new kits there as well. The Leviadon, mm -hmm. massive turtle of doom. That's what you want, isn't it? A massive sea turtle dominating the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, I, I really love the Fangmora eels. They're, they're not up for order yet, but um, I think if I did an army, I'd have it all based around the, the sea creatures. Yeah. They're cool. Also, what we have seen of the fluff, there's lots of uh, Slaneshi vibes going on. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Daughters of Cain book and Malign Portents, there's been threads of Slanesh potentially getting released from its prison. Um, I think it's probably building up to a big big event. We've had all the other gods represented recently with new plastic kits. So are you suggesting that we might see a new Slanesh Battle time in the future, man. She who thirsts may well make an appearance well, in the uh, coming well. years. I don't think it'll be any time soon, just because we're, well, we're getting through this year rapidly, and there's lots yep. of stuff that we know about that's coming, like Adeptus Titanicus. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see some kind of big Slanesh storyline next year, maybe in a similar style to the Malign Port and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Uh, back onto the Deepkin. This is going to be one of the nicest uh, books that I've seen. Um... It reminds me of some of the really old kind of Warhammer mm -hmm. army box. I and mean, then we've got detailed painting guides for multiple factions. Yeah, when I was first shown these pages, I thought it's, it, it's an excellent inclusion. I mean, with the with the first battle tomes that we saw for uh, Edge Sigmar, obviously they were more of just books for war scrolls, which you could download for free anyway. Yeah. With I, a little bit of lore. I think for the first few, we had the, the Grand Alliance books, which was just just War Scrolls, mm -hmm. and they were priced as such, you know, they mm -hmm. weren't expensive. No. And then you had the Battle Tomes where, yeah, there was new fluff, but there wasn't much in addition to that for playing your games. No. So if you just played it, and you weren't too worried about the fluff, there wasn't really a lot for you. Mm. Where I think from maybe the Sylvanith release, they've gone back to how army books They started to, to include more on your spells, your artefacts, it gave you more options for list building, Um started to give you additional rules for different warbands and command traits yeah. and things like that. So there's lots and lots of new options here, which is I think is a good thing. One of the things I always enjoyed out of Warhammer back in the day was making your list, <coughs> picking your spells and your your magic items and making your characters feel more like you created them yeah, exactly. and leading your armies. And this kind of stuff with your different command traits and um, war gear and even the different um, the factions of the army that you can have as well, which we saw yep. in Doors of Cain book and uh, Caradrons are different builds. We're yep. seeing it more more commonly now, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, makes definitely. it uniquely yours. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a really really nice book. Um, I think it's gonna be a kind of finesse army to play. Mm -hmm. I think there's 
again we've had a quick flick through but there's a lot of synergies going on lots of different things that you can do if you're quite clever it's with not this. really an army you can just quite freely deploy and just play yeah i think you need to because of the tide mechanic where different abilities happen on each battle turn it's very um, much about timing yeah exactly so positioning timing a bit like chess yeah, so the first battle round, I believe you get plus one cover. Mm. Or you count as being in cover, even. Mm. So you could use that to your advantage. You've got the uh, eel riding guys, the Ishelin guard, who uh, have a base four up save. Mm -hmm. well, if they're in cover, they've got a three plus save. Mm -hmm. Throw Mystic Shield on one, they've got a two plus save. That combined with the fact that you have to shoot the nearest item of the target means you've got a big tanky unit that's soaking up all the enemy fire. I think it's clever little tricks like that that will win you the games. Yep. I think they're quite expensive in points. I don't think you're ever going to have a massive army, but they do look nails. Yeah, yeah. And there's some of the nicest design models we've seen. They're just fantastic. Yeah, the design studio have, have knocked out the park and we'll begin. The little critters that yeah, are on cool. all the bases and stuff, they're just, ah, yeah. Very, very cool. And like I say, we'll cover that in a separate video, which we'll link below. Um, alongside the book, there's also the uh, the regular stuff that you get nowadays. So we've got War Scroll cards. Now these have been really good. I've picked them up for all my armies recently, and they're such a massive benefit when you're playing a game. Well, you might not have all, you might not be using every single unit from the, the, the book, so it's good to have to hand the quick War Scroll so you can pull up the rules. Yeah, well, I mean, I. I quite like having these down on the battlefield, on the edge of the table, just giving you the kind of stat line of the what you're using. Yeah. You'll still need the, the battle tome for the full rules and all the different faction abilities and spells yep. and stuff, but they're nice little um, memory aids, really. Little yeah. crib sheets where you can remember yep. what's going on. Um, to be honest, I'd like to see more of that for 40k. I think they've done brilliantly in Age of Sigma with these, and it's such a good idea. Mm. Even the scenery piece. Obviously, we can't show you too many of these with all the, the rules on them, but um, yeah, I think it's a really, really good idea. The other thing that I found helpful with the um, Daughters of Cain are the tokens that come with them. So there's lots of different abilities, different um, hero powers, mm -hmm. different command abilities that you play. It's very easy to lose track of what's on what unit. Yeah, who's been buffed with what abilities and things. So, they have provided two sheets of um, punch card tokens, which, I mean, the, the attention to detail is really good. The reverse of them, they've even got some nice Idina themed art on them, which is really nice. Uh, you also get tokens to tell you which tide you're in as well. Uh, we saw this in the Daughters of Cain as well, with just just again memory aids to remind you which turn you're in. Yep. Because you know you could be in a turn and there's some important mechanic with your tides and you don't want to forget Especially it. Especially where, like you say, with a very finesse army where yeah you really need to utilise all of the different special rules. If you forget that maybe you're re-rolling ones or something, then well, it could be the difference between yeah in a combat yeah. and not. Yeah. So you want it, you want these aids to help you know, remind yeah. you what's going on. So I think they're really good. I don't think they're very expensive they're about £10, which is a, a bargain, really. Yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd definitely recommend picking up a set of those if you're playing playing with this army. Um, Seeker of Souls, that sounds a bit slashy. That's it thing. does sound a bit slashy, doesn't it? Well, the, the um, I don't know if, um, unfortunately, need to capture people's souls in order to keep existing. Hmm. And finally, Don't think that's what Teclas envisioned. No, I think I think there's a bit of bad blood between Teclas yes. and uh, the Deep Kin. Yes. But. And finally, for this video, as ever, we've got an awesome set of dice. Now, I do like the um, the art on the boxes. These new new style boxes I like a lot more than the old plastic tubes they used to do for the dice. Okay. Just seems a bit more slicker and. I like the I like the old yeah d d dice cubes. Okay, yeah, okay. I like them. I mean, I can see these are obviously going to be cheaper and easy to produce. And like you say, you can. They're still as portable, but I don't know. I like the cubes. Yeah, I miss the I mean, cubes. And the thing with these, they're easier to store as well. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I've got a lot of dice. I've got some kind of problem collecting <laughs> dice. I'm sure many of you out there do as well. Um, and these are, these are really nice. So they're transparent, and the camera is probably going to fail at actually picking these up. The one is a skull, the other faces have waves for the number, and then the six is some kind of deep kin rune. So, um, 
<laughs> at least at least there's a score for the one that's easiest to tell on the um, door to the yeah. train dice. You had two different symbols, so it's kind of the case of at the start of the game deciding which Memorize. one's one, which one's right. six. Right. These in the box they look like they'd be a bit hard to read, but out of the box they look like they'd be alright actually. I think they'll be I think they'll be fine. When you roll them on a board or something like that, I think they'll be much easier to read. Yeah, and I think even if you use them just as wound markers or you know, to, to track other things in the game. Mm -hmm. they're, they're nice having unique things for your army. Yeah, yeah, I think they're very nice. Very well suited for the army. Yeah, and again, the Games Workshop have always put out really nice dice. Um, I always tend to pick up the unique army specific dice when they come out. Mm -hmm. um, you've had a few armies where they haven't done any, which has been a shame. Yeah, I have, yeah, and then um, I had cursed, cursed um, what were the Death Watch dice? Cursed Death they, Watch dice. Um, I don't know if it was the way they rolled, or just the way I rolled them. Yeah, D D Dave is just rubbish at rolling dice. I am. I am. It's a skill I don't have. <laughs> so yeah, so that's all the kind of rules and dice related stuff of the uh, Deepkin uh, Wave. We're going to go into more detail in the podcast, and stay tuned and we'll have the uh, miniatures unboxing. So we'll see you soon. <laughs>